Hi guys, my name's Live Mondo and welcome to this Nightfall solo video using the Warlock Stormcaller subclass. I was put onto doing this from a guy on Reddit I got in a conversation with and he said he'd struggled on this subclass uh, at the end for time. Just didn't have enough time to put, put the boss down and I suggested maybe giving it a go, having never soloed this Nightfall on the, the Warlock. So a uh, big shout out to Brewers in Blue for putting me onto the idea. Cheers buddy. Uh... I never put what I was using on the screen, I never put my load out, so I'm using Better Devils as Kinetic, Mananin as Energy, Sins of the Past, which is the Leviathan Rocket Launcher as my power weapon. I'm using Crown of Tempests for the, the Exotic Helmet for the Warlock, which gives you the Arc of Energy back on Arc Damage. Uh, I've got two Class Ability Recharge on Arc Mods, one Grenade on Arc Mod, melee arc mod and a kinetic reload mod on and i'm running one mobility five uh, resilience and seven recovery so the kind of, kind of the plan here is you want to be proactive this first area you want to try and take out ads as they appear don't let them run about because if they run about they, they, they become very dangerous so putting grenades in on them when they're going to spawn in rocketing the ones that you can you drop too heavy for every you know, you drop a heavy for every every goblin you put down. So, you know, don't worry about running out of heavy because if you can take two goblins, as you see, I do it a couple of times here. If you can take two goblins down with one one uh, rocket, you're gonna for every one rocket you use, you're gonna get two blocks of heavy. Once you've activated the two plates and you've took down the ads, make your way towards the center structure at the back and try and stay to the left of it and get the ads to come. The 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 yellow bar harpies to come the left side then you can attack them from cover put a rift up and you can just keep throwing grenades try and try and make sure the grenades are hitting multiple enemies getting that chained lightning effect and you'll basically you'll, you won't run out of grenades while this is playing out and while i'm doing that strategy i just want to take this opportunity as i always do to thank everybody that's been supporting the channel your support is very humble and and you know it gives me a lot of motivation to keep doing this, you know. Uh, so if you do like this video, please leave it a, leave it a like. You know, if you've got something to add to the conversation or you just want to say hi, you want to tell me I've done something wrong or I've done something right, then leave a comment. And especially for some of the content that's coming up in the next week, there's some good content coming out, uh, in, in my opinion, obviously, but I'm hopeful that you guys will like it. You know, so don't forget to subscribe. Don't miss this content, guys, because it's, you know, it is going to be pretty good. I've also done a hunter solo run, which I will link at the end of this video. So uh, if you're interested in the the hunter run, uh, then it'll be it'll play after this video. Uh, I kind of messed this part up with the sparrow. If anybody's watched me do this solo before. I never messed this up, but for some reason I just never got momentum off off the first platform I, you land on. So the way you kind of normally do this is boost off the first one, then break, strafe. Now I'm too close to the edge, I just don't get any movement off it. You should just drive off at normal normal speed, land. But when just before you land on every platform, you strafe, and it takes the fall damage off. So... Uh, but again, the strategy for this nightfall, it really is being proactive. I have always found that when you have to try and react to things, especially nightfalls, you then, uh, for want of a better word, you're chasing your tail. So being proactive, attacking enemies as they're spawning, having them spawning into damage is definitely the best way to go. Uh, and, and whenever possible, try and attack uh, from from some sort of relative safety from some cover now in this this next area one, once I've cleared the the goblins out from the front I try and I try and attack from up here having the higher ground and I take out I go for the the, the bunched up ads so the 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 void shielded acolytes the taken acolytes they're the ones I focus on first now because I'm on my warlock Guys, don't forget to keep putting, once you're in some relative safety, make sure you're putting rifts down. You're going to get them back pretty quickly, so, you know, 
don't don't be scared to pull them down as, as long as you're in cover they don't really do too much if you're if you're out in the open that's why the warlock isn't the best for the boss because the hunter can go invisible so he can he can escape damage there the titan has a portable wall so he can hide behind his wall the warlock's kind of exposed because he's got to keep going between the covers so that that was where I've, I, I was getting to the boss no problem um, with decent time but working out a decent strategy for beating him and I'm not even sure my strategy is what you would call a decent strategy I'm not even sure if it's you know if some of you guys will rate it uh, hopefully it works for some people who have been struggling to do it on the warlock but it got the job done and there was a tactical suicide I knew I had my super so w w when we get to that I'll explain so the, the two enemies here that can do the most damage, now obviously we've got a couple of groups of Acolytes, but there's a, a a Knight, a Taken Knight, and a Taken Wizard. The other things you want to kind of get rid of. Now the Taken Knight will spawn, will, will it, it's dependent on the game, it's kind of RNG, depends on whether it's an orange or a red bar. Obviously you want the red bar to spawn in because it's easy to put down. Uh, the other thing is, there's two snipers up at the back. You want to make sure you take those out. They're not too bad to deal with when you've cleared the ads. But if the ads are still up and you're trying to go for them, it, they, they, you know, with the ad shooting you and then taking a sniper shot, it can really, it can really mess with your day. So once you've took them out, jump up on the, jump up on the ledge that the snipers were on and attack the vex from up there. Now, because of the chain lightning effect and the, the getting the grenades back pretty sharpishly, uh, don't be scared to keep doing this. I know people say Sp spamming grenades, oh, it's a cheap way to beat a nightfall. Well, because of the time limit and because of the type of strikes that we're doing, it's it's not the only way, it's the most efficient way. You still have to hit them, you still have a time limit. I do not and I cannot and I will not say that these are easy things to do. Solo on a nightfall is a lot more difficult in, in D2 than it ever was in Destiny 1 because of the time limit. You have to be, like I've said, you have to be proactive. I had somebody tell me it was really easy because they were 270. Well, they start at 270, but they scale with your with your light level, don't they? Uh, I'll be impressed if you do a, a prestige, that's what he said. <laughs> I am going to have a go at the prestige, but... Uh, yeah, it probably just will be a goal. <laughs> so in this section, again, like I've said, you want to be proactive. Try and use the chained lightning effect to your ability, to, the, to, to your advantage, sorry. So try and hit more than one enemy with the grenade. As you can see from there, I got the grenade straight back and again and again because of the chained lightning for the, the you know, the, the wallet, the wallet helmet. Now there's an exploding box to the right on that part, on that plate on the right. If you can hit that, that'll clear out just about all the ads on the right hand side at that plate. Now normally the ads will hide on the left. Once you've cleared all those, go after the taken captain. And now what I find is he gets shielded quite a lot, so I always try and throw my my first grenade slightly behind him to take out the goblins that he's shielding with his body that are shielding him. Once you get onto the plate on the left. Try and, uh, the captain will spawn just in front of the center plate. Try and hit him with a grenade. He, if you can take him out right off the bat, then that that's 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 that is a good job. Uh, I try and take the the, the little taken uh, the little taken. I forget what they are called. The little taken ones, the ones that uh, separate, uh, multiply. Uh, is it the Taken Scions? I can't, I can't remember that. I think they might be Taken Scions. I try and take them out first because they, with the multiplication, they can be, with the, mul the constant multiplying, they can be a real hassle. Now, I don't know if you noticed when I tried to rock it, it actually blew up on the Axiom Dart. So you've got to be careful for that. In fact, in all the runs I've done today, that was the first time that had happened and I was... I was left a little bit like, huh? <laughs> what happened there? But again, still, you'll see all the way through this video, my strategy is to be proactive. 
try and take as many ads out as they're spawning in as possible without overextending or being gung-ho or running in if you've got a repeatable plan most deaths will come in my experience from from being a little bit too uh, gung-ho attacking uh not following any the plan that you might have set out for yourself if you've got a plan the only way you'll know if that plan works is if you stick to it so you know repeatability is 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 the best thing for this so i'm going to activate the right hand plate which will then just leave me the the, the front the furthest front plate so i'll have a taken centurion spawn in i'll put a grenade and then a rocket and then a grenade and that's that's him which will give me a grenade for the goblins which as you can you'll see in the video two of them shield each other which is it's bad heart that that keeps happening there it really does happen a lot uh i've activated the three plates i'm out now in this section here I, I did actually in the next section i did actually have a little bit of a problem here uh because i'm so used to the strategy for the titan i was trying to put a grenade here and then go through and it doesn't work best thing to do is to just try and if you're on the warlock just try and get through to there if you can put that down and keep moving about if you can put the rift down keep moving about throw a grenade at that cabal you, you'll get through it now we're on to the this isn't the most difficult section it's probably just the section where you know the first part this first part will always generally it'll always be the same You'll throw your grenades or you'll shoot your enemies in the same place and, you know, you'll get rid of them at roughly the same rate. Now, I find it's the next section. Once you've activated the first, the, 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 once you've moved so far forward, you activate that bottom conflux in the center. That's when things start to you can change up. RNG, it ruins more perfect runs than anything else. So I'm putting grenades on just about everything. Because I'm getting that chained lightning, because of the current of Tempest, I'm getting my grenades back at a decent rate. But schoolboy error, right there. I forgot to check, and that's something I always do. And it was just this time, I just didn't do it. I forgot to check to make sure I'd actually got the activation on the Conflux, and I hadn't. So it was just as well I actually managed to get this run, because that, that slowed me up. Make sure you act. You know, make sure that you you are activating confluxes on. Don't run away from them too quickly. Uh, so you take the snipers out. You have to. You don't have to, but they're probably for me. They're the most annoying part of this level. If you don't take them out, they they will just do massive damage to you. And probably for the same strategy that I'm employing myself, they will take big damage from too far away to do anything but shoot and their one shots don't do a lot more than yours so if you're on a subclass if you if you're doing this on the warlock and you're doing it like this you'll have the crown of tempest hopefully if not just aim a rocket at those confluxes you can hit the conflux with a rocket and it will help no end clearing clearing the conflux if it doesn't kill the the invisible minotaurs it will kill the the goblins that can shield them so then it just leaves you like what I've just done there, although I'd hit him with a grenade. Same, same idea. Now he's left exposed. Now I can run up and, you know, there's nobody to shield him. I can run up. That's why I'm using the better devils, because it has a lot more, a lot more blunt force trauma. <laughs> has a lot more impact. You can attack with heavy, heavy shots, like big, big damage shots, as opposed to my usual nameless. So... Normally, what I would do here is I would put a couple of grenades on this guy. I've got full heavy. I've got enough heavy. And then I go through the portal. But I'm like looking, thinking, well, why is that portal not coming up? It's because I never activated the first conflux. So I run up here. I'm still expecting it. And then I've realized. So I lost a couple of seconds here. Nothing. It was no big deal because I beat, beat it. But there was a couple of seconds that I've got to run back, activate this conflux and go back. Could be the difference between getting that last rocket, last grenade, or your super onto the boss. So, super important to get the confluxes. 
and Nova on the boss. Now, the boss strategy for the Warlock is completely different to the Titan and Hunter. Like I've already detailed, he's more exposed. So, I do have I do have kind of a strategy for getting damage on him while you're while you're doing the plates, but then after that it, it literally is I'm 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 going from cover to cover. He dodges quite a bit. He dodges grenades, he dodges rockets, so aim them at his feet. And then you'll get something on him. Uh the super, save your super for him. Make sure you've got a super to attack him with. And the first wave of ads that come out, make sure you you deal with those because because they are uh, the harpies I've found, they can be a real pain in the backside. So, as you can see, I've put, uh, you know, as you can see in the video, I do a grenade, rocket, and grenade. Then I'm going to the first plate because that grenade, rocket, grenade is enough to make him teleport off there. I put the grenade at his feet so that by the time he comes in and is taking damage, I've got another one. I do the same on the plates. I throw a speculative grenade for them to spawn in on, into. And then, by the time they appear, I'm hopefully, I'm going to have another grenade. So the idea behind the strategy for this is, you go to, I always go to, you go to the plate on the left of whatever he spawns. Activate the plate. Once you activate the plate, it will start spawning in the ads on the other side. You don't want to spend ages taking those ads out. If there's only a couple of ads, you can go and attack them. There's only a couple of ads left. You put a couple of grenades over or a rocket, whatever, and then go and attack them. And then once you've activated the plate, push right up against that wall at, at, at the front. Do not worry about any of his attacks. If you're close enough to the wall, he can't stamp you, he can't snipe you, and he can't fire any, any, uh, can't hit you with any fire. What you'll want to do is take him down, take that first health bar down, that first third, and then once you, once you, as you can see here, I know he's, that's going to take him down. I'm, I'm moving to the next area. I want to get a grenade on him before the shield goes up. And then it's rinse and repeat. This one's a little bit different because there's some minotaurs. Uh, if needs be, as you can see here, I, I give it a bit. And then I put a rocket down on the floor, which is enough to do, you know, some sort of damage. I get the devils out. And just finish finish the minotaur off with the devils. And now because I've been doing it while I've lost, I've been on the plate. The plate's activated, which is it's caused the next set of ads to spawn in. Of which I'm putting my rift down, make sure I'm safe. I've got to put that rift down, and I'm just going to keep putting up, putting grenades over and firing speculative shots. And then as soon as I think that, for me, as soon as the minotaurs are gone. I'll have took some of the ads with them, but as soon as the minotaurs are gone, I'm over because I'm wasting time. The, the, amount of, the longer I'm not activating the plate, the more time I'm wasting. So uh, now, now that we've got to this part, now you're going to do do some damage to him. He's going to teleport up to the back. He's got a couple of different phases. So he's got his plates phase where he, he goes on the platforms, puts the shield up, you do the platforms. Then we get to this phase where he teleports up to the back. If you're on a Titan, the best thing to do is to be up at the back, up there, up at the back when he spawns, behind him with a, with a wall up. Keep putting your wall up, keep hitting him with grenades. But the Warlock needs to keep moving between cover. And as you can see, the cover goes round and kind of like a... I think it goes from right to left a little bit. Uh... It, it, it always has actually went right to left, but it didn't this run. It didn't this run, so I could have actually have seen it wrong the first time. I, this time it went from right to left, and then I had to go back centre. You know, like I say, and a friend of mine, Harry Boy 8, had said to me, you're going to struggle on that because it's, you know, Stormcallers, it's not a great subclass to be doing solos on, especially this solo. And boy, was he right. It really was. It really was difficult compared to some of the other ones that I'd done. Now, an another thing you can do on this. Now, he'll teleport from the back. He'll teleport into the center and he'll start to... There he goes. He'll teleport there, try and get a grenade on him, get it on his feet. 
You can wait till he's firing his fire at you because he won't move. And as you can see, I thought it was going to go right to left. It didn't. So I had to go back here. And then it did go. So it was right to left. It just, now I've got to go up to this side and get behind here. And I think I, I, I think pretty soon it's going to, he's going to have enough of me running about. See, so yeah, a couple of good rockets, a couple of good rockets, a couple of good grenades. You know, that's what you need now. I don't think I survived this one, but I, when I put my rocket out, I thought to myself, I genuinely thought to myself, if I put this rocket on him, you know, I could see the cover disappearing. I knew I didn't stand a great chance of surviving, but I knew if the rocket had hit him, I, I, you know, it would have been worth it. Another grenade and rocket on him would have been worth it. Now, some people will argue the fact that if I'd have stayed alive, but the distance I would have been away from him, It'd have been even harder to do that damage. So, we get up here, get the rift down. Now, these exploders, you kind of, you don't have to get rid of them. I get rid of them, you know. I get rid of them so that it's one less worry. Now, that yellow bar, that major, I want rid of him. For no other reason, main reason, than that's heavy. If I need it, I know that it's heavy there now. You know, I meet a bit of a sticky end in here, I think, pretty soon. Uh, that's that's something that he does. That's that's something that he does. He dodges rockets and grenades. Now, I don't know if you noticed there. I didn't expect to die there. But what I was going to say is, I when he was firing his fire, that purple fire that he fires... He doesn't really move that much, so that's when you can get him with rockets. That's when you can get him with grenades. Uh, and now that I've gotten to his headless phase, my super will take care of the rest. So I'm, I think, I think that's really important to get him there. It doesn't matter if you've only got thirty seconds left. I've put a grenade down. I've went super, and that's all she wrote. Make sure you, when you fire your super, you don't get too close to him like I just done there, because he'll slam, and he could. It's not the first time he slammed me right off the plate, right off the, right off the map. And uh, there we go, guys. That is my solo warlock. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I hope it's helpful to you guys. If it has helped any of you, don't forget, as my warlock is going to show you right now. Thumbs up for the video. Uh, I have been Live Mondo. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.